All right, hi. So I'm gonna be setting up this uh, closure project. This is a project I've been meaning to start for a while. Uh, this is going to be a uh, debug adapter protocol um, system for closure. Uh, and it's gonna talk with uh, the CIDR mRipple debugger middleware. Uh, so this is gonna enable uh, editors like NeoVim uh, to use their debugger adapter protocol support and plugins. Uh, so you've got like mVim dap UI. Uh, you'll be able to use this sort of thing to connect to uh, Closure DAP, and that will connect onwards to your NREPL enabled Closure server. And that means that you can live debug a running Closure application using the same NREPL connection that you're using with your REPL tooling. Uh, this is being developed alongside Conjure, my NeoVim REPL system. Uh, but it doesn't depend on it. It's it's completely separate to it. Uh, it's going to pair really well with it, but you can use this with any uh, DAP supporting editor. Uh, where DAP is, I don't know if they have a link to it, uh, DAP debugger. A uh, thing, I think, yeah, the spec is designed by Microsoft. Uh, it's a bit like language server protocol. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, let's go to the other camera. Good point. Um, so uh, the debug adapter protocol is uh, kind of similar to language server protocol. And I think LSP is also designed by Microsoft. Uh, so this is a similar sort of thing, but it allows you to introspect live running programs rather than um, a static analysis of your code. So I want to enable the bridge between that world, the closure and REPL uh, and live REPL experience being able to use that debugger through the DAP protocol. Uh, but today we're going to set up this closure project from scratch. So it's only going to be a hello world still. It's not going to do anything special. We're not going to actually implement this yet because that's going to take me a long time. I'm going to have to work that out. But I thought I'd show how I set up a few parts of this. So some basic stuff <laughs> like, hey, you've got to pick a license. Um, as well as your folder structures, because that's something that can actually be kind of confusing to a new closure program. Uh, we're going to then set up some scripts so we can run the project really easily. Uh, we want to be able to start uh, NREPL servers so that we can connect our editor to our Closure program, be able to uh, send code to it while it's running and modify it. And we're going to be able to want uh, we're going to want to be able to run the tests uh, either in a one-off mode in CI or in a watch mode locally. And then we're going to want to Dockerize it because that just makes it easy for people to run. They don't need a specific Closure version, that sort of thing and then run it in CI on GitHub Actions, uh, which I've never done before, might not get to that part. Uh, and if we do, I might struggle on that bit for a bit. So we'll leave that until last. So first of all, let's just grab a license. Uh, I always use the unlicense. I'm gonna continue to use that. I just take it from an existing project I've got. And let's just drop down here. So we just do unlicense, paste, done. Hey, and we can commit that. And this program uh, that I'm managing my Git with is called Lazy Git. Uh, and I am one. Uh, Git being a insult in the UK. Uh, Lazy Git is very, very good. Uh, highly recommend it. So we're going to commit this. Actually, there's a trailing line there. Get rid of that. You can actually like get into your editor from the Lazy Git interface, which is really nice. So we'll commit that. Add a, a license. Lovely. Uh, so on the main branch, we have two commits here. We have initial commit, and we have add a license. Lovely. Uh, our next step, let's check that off. Small victories, you know. Uh, we're going to want an initial closure project structure. So a closure project uh, is normally split into two directories. We have our SRC source and test. Uh, and you normally uh, add an extra layer underneath the source uh, to kind of separate uh, your files from other uh, libraries and different parts of uh, the system that's running. Because in the JVM, you're loading all of the classes into one big space, and they all share the same namespace or the same, um, the same class path. And you don't want your class path to collide with somebody else's. So you want a unique prefix uh, to your files, which is why in Closure Projects we do this. So I'm gonna do make do p Dash p is going to create intermediate directories. I want a source directory. And under here, I want uh, closure dap. That is going to have to be 
underscore. Yes, confusing myself here. So uh, Java does not allow hyphens <laughs> in names of uh, the JVM does not allow hyphens in the names of things or in the paths. So closure uh, will accept a hyphen, but turn it into an underscore at the file system level. So we have to create it with an underscore. Uh, and inside source closure dap, I'm going to create. Uh, normally, I go with main here as an entry point. So I'm going to go with that. So let's go with uh, main.clj. And that's my editor has actually created the, the name, namespace for that. And we're going to create a function in here. Um, what do we call this? We're actually going to, when we run this, we're going to run a specific function. So we're not going to say run the main file. We're going to say run this function under main, which means that you can actually have multiple entry points. You can have like um, a, a user entry point for when users run it, and you could also have a, a dev entry point and would be able to pick and choose which function we want to run, which is very handy. Uh, it used to be that you could only say run the main namespace and it would run a function called main under the namespace you specify. That's no longer the case. We can now pick and choose, which is good. So I'm just going to go with, um, what do we call it? I'm going to go with main for now because I don't know what it's going to need to do, but we'll go with that for now. And it's actually going to give given um, an argument, which is going to be a, an options uh, map. So we'll go with opts for now, and we're going to do a println. Hello world. And we'll print the opts because it could come in handy. Uh, dot p print. We'll use closure dot p print for this. Let's require actually. Require closure dot p print as pp, and then pp slash p print opts. So this will print the options it receives, and then print hello world. Nothing too fancy, but it's a good start. Um, I want, kind of want to give this something different. Let's go with run. Yeah, we'll go main run. That's that's good. I like that. Okay, so we have a main function. Uh, we're also going to need some tests. Make dash p test closure dap, and I'm going to create a test file in here. Closure dap uh, main test dot coj. Again, this is going to be main hyphen test in the code. Main underscore test in the file system. Um, so we require a few things here. I'm not going to go and write, write any tests really, but we'll do a sample one. Uh, so I'm going to include closure.test as t. And uh, what do we have? Closure hyphen dap. Can you can you see here it's it's put hyphens in. It knows it should be hyphens, even though the file name has underscores and the path has underscores. So the file system is always underscores. The closure code is always hyphens just because JVM legacy reasons. So we're going to include closure dap dot main as main. And what are we going to do with that? I can't load it right now. I tried to evaluate it, but that won't work. Uh, we'll define a test, def test, uh, hello. We'll just have something here that makes sure things work. So t testing uh, math still works. t is uh, 2 plus 1, 1. We always write it backwards like this. In all these test frameworks, they expect that the uh, expected value is on the left. And the right hand side is your actual thing you're testing. So we've got that there. Uh, we have an explanation. So if this test failed, A, our computer is broken and we've been hit by a cosmic ray. And B, uh, we would see this explanation. And if you nest a bunch of these testings like this, uh, you would actually get these combined. So the error message would include all of this, which is quite helpful. You can tell like what level of nesting the error came from. Uh, gives it a bit of context. So uh, now we have a test. We have no way to run it yet. We can't just say like closure test. Closure isn't that easy. Closure gives you all the building blocks to do whatever you want, but it doesn't do it out of the box. Uh, you've got to do a little bit extra to get the stuff you need. It's only one step away, which means that you have a lot of flexibility, but it isn't um, like with cargo with Rust, where you can do like cargo test, I think. And it just runs your test, which is really good. But you've only got one choice then. Um, so we have some test files. Let's, uh, let's do tree. Take that in, in all of its glory. 
So what was next on our readme? We have some initial closure project structure. Good. Uh, I'd argue let's make a script directory as well, just because I like putting my scripts into a directory. Uh, and I think we're done with that one. So let's mark that off and let's commit those. So main COJ, main test, commit them, and we'll say uh, add initial hello world code and test. Cool. Yeah, lovely. So next up is being able to run it. How do we run this closure program? Well, I'm going to use the closure CLI. So uh, the closure CLI can execute any kind of closure or fetch all of our dependencies. Uh, it is very confusing, uh, especially to new people. Like this stuff, I don't think this is particularly helpful to a beginner, at least. Uh, to someone who kind of already knows how to use it, it might, might be more useful. Um, but to an absolute beginner, this is quite scary. And you should really, like, you want to find some examples uh, or like recipes of here's how you run a project. So here's how you run a project. We want to run that uh, start function inside main. So we're going to run closure. Uh, there's some interesting differences here where closure and CLJ are essentially the same, except CLJ uses a program called RL wrap, which adds kind of uh, line-wise movements. So the ability to move your your cursor and edit in line like that isn't a given. So CLJ wraps the closure program. So it's uh, kind of essentially doing RL wrap closure is the same as CLJ. So if you ever try and download the closure CLI and just run CLJ and it says, hey, I can't do that. I don't have RL wrap. That's why, because RL wrap is a separate program and it's just a shorthand to run it. I'm not gonna use that here. We're just gonna use closure. So closure dash X is how we run a function. You can see some history of mine in my fish shell there. Uh, we're going to give it the name, which is closure dap dap dot main slash uh, start. Did I call it start or run? Run, and it executed. It ran. So that printed our hello world pretty quickly as well. A little bit slow because it's creating a JVM and everything. Uh, and we got a nil here, and that nil is the options. So there's currently nothing there. However, if we give it something, say um, nrepl um, true, it now gives it a map of options where the key nrepl is set to true. So you can give it any number of, of key value pairs and it will pass those into your function. So we're actually going to use that to set flags in our system early on. So rather than uh, having to include a library to do like CLI passing and that sort of thing, we'll just rely on this for now because it allows us to set stuff on and off. Um, so we can set a flag on and off. Useful. Uh, I'm actually going to put this in a script. So we're going to have a uh, script slash, uh, let's call it closure dap, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether we should put this in top level or not. I'm just going to do run for now. We might change that in the future. Uh, so bin bash, no bin user m user bin m bash. Is that how you do it? Yeah, that's the portable way to uh, declare what you want your script to run with. Uh, I'm going to run this exact thing here. And we're going to do a dollar at on the end. This means we can do script run, and it will run the hello world. And we can do foo true, and it ran with foo true. Cool. So we can run our script nice and easy. We can run our tool nice and easy. So we have a one-liner. So developer tooling. How do we run this with a REPL? So this is where we start to get to the point where we can interactively uh, change our program. So first of all, let's commit that script. Uh, add a simple script to run the program. So now we want uh, to start an mrepl within our system if a certain flag is set. Uh, or at least we want a script to be able to run it in dev mode. Um, so how are we going to do that? We're going to have um, script dev. 
perhaps. User bin env bash. And I'm going to go look up the uh, cider nripple documentation because there is a really good example. Over here, there is a one liner basically. Uh, do you want to use the API usage? So there's all these different things you can do with that. Uh, we don't want to use line. It is. I didn't add a depths.eden file yet, so we'll add that as well. Um, sync this one. Yes. Uh, should we go with that one? Mm. Yeah, we'll go with the command line one. So. Do we? I think we do. Yeah, normally when I write a closure program, I write it so that uh, when you start in development mode, you also start the real program. So if I'm writing a server that is pulling uh, events from a stream and pushing them off somewhere else or to a database or something, I write it so that my development setup starts a database, it starts a stream, it starts everything in Docker, uh, it starts the program and it starts running and reading from something and writing somewhere and then connects my REPL into the middle of that uh, so that I have a running system that I can change and modify while it's running uh, and see the effects. Um, I think for this system, because it involves connecting to a running end REPL and requires a bit more setup, uh, I'm not going to do that. It's like a lot of this stuff is on a case by case basis. On this case, uh, I don't want my program to do anything. I want it to turn on, load the code, but don't actually begin running. Uh, I don't want it to try and run a server on a port, for example. Uh, I just want it to load the code with an mrepl and then I'll start working on it. Uh, so we're going to copy what they have here. So for this, we need a depths.eden. And this is how you declare all of your uh, dependencies and your uh, kind of uh, aliases uh, for your closure project. And those aliases can contain different dependencies. So in uh, JavaScript, in NPM, you have dependencies and dev dependencies. In uh, depths.eden and closures dependency system, you have as many as you want. You can combine them and mix and match them as well. So in here, I need a depths section. Uh, I'll put some depths in there in a sec. I need some aliases. Uh, and in here, CIDR COJ is going. So we'll do, uh, should we, we could call it CIDR COJ. Why not? I, I'm just gonna call it mrepl. Yeah, I'm gonna call it mrepl. Um, and they're specifying a closure version here, which we don't need to do. We can do that over here. So do that, uh, paths. Uh, so we're gonna specify our paths, which will be, um, what's in our paths? Source and test. Yeah, we'll just do both of those. We could make it so that the test paths aren't uh, loaded initially and we only load them when we're writing our tests, but I don't think it's worth it. Like, there's just no point. This makes it easier for us to uh, do our development. So I'll keep it this way and it won't impact um, any users either, I don't think. Uh, I'm going to go to closure.org and check the latest version. I think it's 111 something. 111 one. So 111 one. There's our closure version. And if you haven't written any closure before, uh, you might find it weird that we specify our language dependency inside our depths. Uh, if you've never been able to experience that before, it's kind of a game changer because it means that you are not relying on the system wide version of some language that's installed. You can have per project in different directories across your file system. Each one can specify a different closure version that it depends on. Um, this wouldn't even be a problem if we couldn't do this really because closure is scarily backwards compatible. Uh, it is never introducing breaking changes. I can't think of one, maybe there have been like a long time ago. Um, but it only accretes and adds things. 
um there is no culture of yeah we'll just break stuff and people will update it will be fine um the culture enclosure is don't break things only improve um but despite that we can still specify a closure version uh, on a project per project basis which is very handy so we're depending on um side of ram repl but only when the alias n repl is enabled um so this will uh, when it's invoked uh run the module n repl command line with the middleware side of middleware so these are like command line options pre-configured and i actually think that's out of date and we'll throw a warning and I'll have to tweak that slightly, but we will see. So this is how they run it. They run it with COJ dash a side of COJ. So I'm going to go into my um, dev file, but then here I'm going to just use closure instead of COJ as well. And I called my alias nrepl. So script dev, Let's see if this starts, it might throw an error. Oh, no, it's up. Cool. Uh, so what I can do now is come down into uh, Closure Dapp, open up the source file. So here we have main.coj. And you can already see my REPL has connected to port 45107, which is 45107. And if we list the sessions now, we are connected to the Norwegian Lundehund. Uh, that's just conjure, it makes up names. Um, so we are connected to this running program now. This terminal on the left is a running program. Terminal on the right is the source code. So I can go in here and I can run Hello World. And we see Hello World here now. I'm just going to move this other terminal over to another window so it's not blocking. Let's make this a bit bigger. And I can evaluate run. So I just reloaded the run function. So I can actually say, well, what happens when we run the run function? Oh, we need to give it an argument. Give it an argument. It prints an empty map and it prints hello world. Okay, let's go redefine it. Hello world, uh, hello Twitch and YouTube. I just reloaded that function and now it prints something different. So we're going to be able to do this like the entire time I develop this project in that one line in the depths.eden and in the uh, dev script, which really didn't need to be a script because it's <laughs> so simple. We have started the program with a a hole in the in the side that my editor and my tooling can plug into and modify live. And this is how I do all of my development. But this is the first thing I want set up before I work on a project. This isn't something I set up later when it gets a bit hard. I set this up straight away. Uh, and this even works for tests. So let's, uh, I'm gonna leave that code like that for now. Um, let's go to our test. I can load the test file. So I just did comma EF and we can see over here, it evaluated the file and I can run this test. Success, test was okay. How about we break it? Reload the test, run the test. Nope, I expected uh, three <laughs> and three does not equal two. Good, glad math still works. And run the test again, it's all good. So we have live evaluation uh, plugged into our program already in one line. Excellent, that's useful, more than useful. That is what I base my career on. So we have developer tooling. I'm gonna mark that one as done. I think that's good enough. Uh, let's commit it. Oh, this .cp cache is from LSP tooling for closure. So the stuff that is giving me uh, some my auto completion, go to definition, that sort of thing, is going to generate these files. You don't want to commit those. So what I'm going to do is add them to get ignore. So slash .cp cache, and let's commit. So we'll ignore that. Oh, and the nrepl port. We don't want that either. So slash dot nrepl port. Cool. Uh, ignore some files. Uh, add dev tooling. Um, say hi to cool viewers. There we go. So next up is testing. Uh, so we are going to integrate uh, Coucher 
which is my favorite test runner. And it's a very similar story. So we go and find uh, in, their, in their documentation, here's the alias. So it's got test, extra depths, main ops. Looks very, very similar. Make sure I grab the right curly brace. So we're going to go put that in our depths. Where are you? There we go. And I'm indenting here. I'm telling my editor to do that. But there's so many ways I can do this. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we have counter. We have the latest version because I hope that they're keeping their documentation, their versions up to date here. So that's 1069. They're on 1069. Lovely. And they actually uh, recommend that you do this. They create a bin directory and they put this script inside it, which really just does this. So what I normally do is take that, go over to my script directory, create a counter file, hash expression mark, user bin env bash, and put that there. If you don't write this this way, by the way, uh, it's not just for no reason. Uh, it actually breaks some operating systems like uh, Nixos. It works fine on Arch, but if you're using Nixos and you do like uh, bin bash, that won't work. So it won't work on some operating systems. So pro tip, do that. Um, that is the most portable way to reference bash. Uh, so we're doing dash m test. That means we can do script capture. And it takes a second, starts a JVM, all those wonderful things. Oh, we want to put a configuration file, ran one test. Cool. What you can do is say dash dash watch. And now it's going to start uh, the system and it is going to continually rerun the test when I change a file. So we go back into closure dap, pick a source file, we've only got one, and let's just change file there and it rerun and that takes like less than 50 milliseconds so once it's up and running it's fine and that's how I normally use my tests uh, so it did warn us that we don't have any config file so I'm just going to go and grab a default config file because that normally helps out in the future um, where's the default one I know there's a default configuration file somewhere. Ah, this will do. Here's an example. Yeah. And that goes in tests.eden. So we paste this in. Um, I'm not sure about that formatting, but you know. Uh, so counter report dots. Um, what other reporters do they have? Could we, could we make this pretty? Uh, we'll just leave it like this for now. No point wasting time on it. So we've got randomize, filter, capture output, profiling, random seed. Let's put, change that slightly. Uh, profiling count. So it's going to tell us what tests are slow. Test paths are just test. NS patterns are anything ending in test. Looks great. Um, let's just change this indentation because don't like it too much. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is a huge mistake. Okay. Better. Oh no. More. I'll do these ones a bit more manual. Cool. There we go. So now when I run Coucher, it shouldn't complain and it might look prettier, maybe? Good enough, good enough for me. Okay, so we have tests. Uh, let's commit those. So we have Coucher, we have it added to depths, and we have a tests.eden file. Add Coucher slash test runner, just in case people don't know what it is. Um, so what are we up to now? We are gonna wrap this in Docker quickly. So when I wrap closure programs in Docker, what I do, is go to here, so the Closure Hub, and I like to find the latest light one. So there's an Alpine build. So what one have we got? Tamarin 8, no. Tamarin 18 Alpine, Tall Steps Alpine, I think. 
One of these will do. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that'll do. So we'll do from, and it's gonna be this one. From, oh, you have to do like closure, colon, that. Yes. Um, so I think all we need to do is uh, add our source code. So let's just look at our source. So we're going to add, um, well, we're also going to do uh, dot doc uh, ignore, which is really important. So if you ignore your git and your dot cp cache, it will improve your Docker build and load times and dot coj condo. Yeah, let's uh, ignore coj condo as well. Dot coj condo. These are just more linting tools that I have. You might not have those. Uh, slash dot coj condo. Let's ignore that. So you should always Docker ignore stuff that isn't essential to um, your uh, Docker file. So we're going to add uh, add dot now. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can add dot. We'll do source source add test test add script script and I think that's everything. Oh no, we're going to also add depths dot eden and tests dot eden. Um, right, I think it's good. Um, LSP. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Oh, you make a very good point. I might actually have that in my global git ignore, which is probably why it's not showing up. But, yep, good catch. Yeah. I think I have a few things in my global git ignore, so I'm not going to notice those too often. Um, okay, uh, how do you do the run? This is something that I always forget how the entry point works. Let's look through my GitHub. I normally pick from something that's already pretty good. I know what we can use. I know what you can use. Where is it? There it is. So this is still a private repo and I never finished it. Wait, is it private? Maybe it's not. No. Um, so I started building a Discord uh, chatbot that uses voice. And I do have one that works, but I shut it down because it was not too great. And I started building a new one which is also all enclosure. So let's copy from this, uh, which has a very clever Docker system where it has multiple layers, uh, but we're not gonna bother with that. So what I need is command. That's what I was looking for. So it's cmd uh, script slash run. So we should be able to do docker build dot tag uh, closure dep, I think. I normally use Docker Compose or that sort of thing to run this as well, like to do my builds and execute things, but uh, we'll do it the manual way. I don't want to have to go into Docker Compose right now. And we've kind of already covered all of the closure stuff. Um, now I just want to get a simple Docker container working and I want to get that um, running the tests in GitHub Actions. So that's all that is outstanding really. Um, and I should be able to get that done. And if you're not interested in that part, no problem. Um, so now I want to run, I never run um, Docker stuff manually. Docker run, I think it's that dash dash RM dash, no, I don't need TI, but RM. Is that how you do it? RM not found. <laughs> Of course. Uh, so where is R or wrap trying to be used? Um, maybe in our Docker file we can install that. So how do we get R or wrap? Uh, Alpine Linux fetch R L wrap. I think it's a what's their package manager called? Is it APK? I 
I think it's APK. Mm, APK add, maybe. Yeah, APK update, APK add. So run APK update, run APK add uh, RL wrap. See whether this works. Hopefully. And normally in my Docker files, I'll put a little uh, time and date stamp as well, uh, just above the uh, the update command. So I'll put a little time and date here, uh, and I'll update that whenever I need the Docker container to cache new dependencies and update, uh, which is kind of handy, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. So let's see if our run command works. Ah. Yep. Let's remove that RM. Put it here. And the RM should remove the container when it's done, I think. Hey, there we go. We ran it inside Docker. Excellent. Um, so I should be able to tell this what script to run as well. How do you specify the entry point? Um, that might just be script slash coucher. I was right. So what I actually want to do is make sure this Docker file caches the uh, testing tools. Hey, it ran the tests and it told us what ones were slow. So slowest test was <laughs> this thing and it took 0 0.05 seconds. I'm okay with that. So we're going to make our Docker file uh, just cache the tests and cache our dependencies. And we're going to do that by saying uh, run uh, closure dash p. Uh, and we want to do that with uh, so I need to check the closure command line arguments. We need to tell it to use our alias, but we don't want it to, you can use different parts of aliases. So one of them is just use the class path. One of them will do uh, the main function as well. Um, I think it's dash, uh, which one is it? Maybe it is a, if I do closure dash a test n repl, no, without n repl dash p, does that just fetch dependencies? No. Uh, use of main ops a is deprecated, use dash m instead. Dash m? No. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. Okay, we won't do that. But what I wanted to do was make sure that it would prefetch the dependencies for that alias. So it would only download Coucher, um, or it would pre-download Coucher while we were building the Docker container, but we won't bother with that. Okay, so we have a Docker file and we have some more ignores. So let's commit those. And add our basic Docker file. And we now want to get this in an, in a GitHub action. So we have a Docker file, which should be enough to get us going. I think all we need to do is to find an action in GitHub. Um, so how do we do that? They define the action here. So when they create a new action.yaml file inside the action directory you created above. Um, do I have to call it action.yaml? Maybe I do. That'd be annoying. Let's go look at uh, GitHub Actions here. Can we do it through the UI? Can we do Docker? So run a Docker image. Build a Docker image, deploy run our push or registry. I don't want to have to run my tests inside GitHub's um, uh, VMs. Continuous integration, Docker image. I mean, that's kind of what I want, almost. Container? No.
run docker build. Yeah, this is doing run docker build. Okay, might not be able to do this part just yet. But the goal and what I do with every other CI system is set up a uh, Docker file that can capture all of my dependencies, so a closure version or something like that, um, and then can be executed by any CI service. So Circle CI, uh, for example, will just take a container and run it for you and just tell you how it went. Um, I was hoping GitHub Actions would do the same, but weirdly they they seem to want you to kind of use their setup system. So they're kind of almost their own equivalent of Docker in some ways. Uh, and I don't really want to do that because that means using Ubuntu, which is notoriously out of date for things like closure packages to install a closure package, um, which I really don't want to do. That's it's why I want to run it inside um, uh, inside closure inside uh, Docker. So they're putting it under doc github slash workflows slash something. So if I create uh, make the dash p dot github slash workflows slash uh, test dot yaml test dot yaml I like four letter yaml. Oh no, I didn't want to make that a directory. Armed uh, dot github workflows test dot yaml mvim yeah so we're going to edit this file and let's go grab something how about one of these we'll just we'll try one of these uh maybe we just put this action in the root could do i don't like it though Might have to leave that as an exercise to the viewer. Um, so, Cherry says you could run all of the closure stuff, yeah, on a Docker container and use Conjure outside the container. A dev environment, not only run tests. So, do you mean um, for CI testing or running your development environment and your kind of N REPL inside a Docker container? Um, Yeah, NREPL and stuff inside Docker container. Yeah, you totally could do that. I think we can actually do um, docker run script dev. And as long as we, uh, yeah, so as long as we um, forward this port outwards, the NREPL port, so you'd need to um, specify the NREPL port ahead of time. So we wouldn't know that this is port 39.0.17. A lot of the closure work I do is inside Docker containers. And I will forward the ports out of those but you have to know the port ahead of time so you have to start nrepl and tell it what port to use uh, and bridge that through docker and say hey docker pass this port outwards and then i will edit outside mount my source code into the container and run the nrepl inside the container and then open the port up in the docker container and i'll connect to that um, and uh, control it that way so you can keep everything Dockerized, but still do interactive development with it. That's uh, yeah, very doable. Oh, it doesn't want me con to control C it, huh? Oh, because I ran it without dash ti. Yeah. Uh, Docker ps. <laughs> we need to. I need to kill that out from outside. There we go. Um, that's why you run it with ti. So I'm not going to set up the CI right now. I'll do that another time um, but the goal would be use a docker container to run your tests and run that under ci which is what i do with kunja um, but under circle ci not under github actions um, but i'll probably get that working at some point uh, so let me just make sure this is pushed and then anyone can come and grab this commit as well so push these commits so if you go to oh not that one uh, where are we? Oh, I know what happened. If you go to Oracle slash closure dap, 
There you go. Uh, and you go to the first commit, you will be able to get this exact state. So uh, doc file, uh, license, test, scripts, entry points, dev stuff, all those things. Um, so if you're working on this theoretically, you'd come down into the repo. I'd open two terminals. I'd have my source um, in one of them, one of my terminals. I'd uh, start my tests over here, open another terminal. So you want three uh, and I'll do my script dev. So now I have my tests running in uh, one terminal. I have my NREPL server started here. I can connect to it over here. Now I can evaluate things live. I can go and change um, test. I can go and change test and break it. It breaks. I can fix the test. It's fixed. Uh, and I can evaluate stuff live and run the test in my editor. So this is the bare bones. This is the absolute like minimum that you would need. Um, the next step on from this is obviously CI, uh, but that really depends on the CI system you want to use. Uh, and I haven't set up CI in like two years, so uh, I'm not fresh on that. But I'll probably do another tutorial at some point and show how to actually get the CI working. But that's not my expertise and there's people out there that are better than me at that. Um, but this is how I recommend setting up a closure project. It's how I recommend working with one. Um, you can even, um, because we're using CIDR, if you're using something like Conjure or you're using any good REPL tooling, uh, you should be able to use, uh, uh, well, for me, it's comma RR uh, to refresh every file in the project as well. So you can actually go through and make uh, changes to loads of files hit comma rr and it will reload anything that changed so a bit like how your uh, tests are reloading that can be a really nice workflow as well um, yeah it works cool okay i'm going to stop the video now but uh hopefully that's helpful um and yeah leave comments or questions and things like that and come and look at the readme and the repo if you want to grab this repo in its current state and then modify it yeah.